uh, not the same generation as what we flew last time. This one is one generation older. So uh, we are also testing out new secondary thermal protection uh, materials. So basically, like if the heat shield isn't in this one spot, can this other material protect the metal is the thinking there. Uh, also checking of the ship's structural strength in those areas where we're looking to add that ship catch hardware just to see if it survives entry. So yeah, as we've been saying, we've, we've done um, a lot of calculations and simulations. This view right here is super cool. This is looking out from the aft engine bay, basically at the bottom of Starship. Um, then on the center left-hand panel, if you will, we have one of the forward Starship flats, flaps, so one of the flaps located at the top of the vehicle. Underneath that is one of the aft end flaps, like the one that we see in the main picture there on the right-hand side of your screen. Now these views, as the vehicle continues to enter the Earth's atmosphere, drawing a crowd once again here at SpaceX and Hawthorne as folks tune in as the mission continues on. Now the next event that we have coming up, uh, we should hear the call out that the vehicle is transonic around T plus one hour and two minutes or so. That means that the vehicle is traveling near the speed of sound. We, we say near the speed of sound because there are certain parts of the vehicle where airflow is going faster and other parts where it's going slower. So it kind of teeters there on the brink of, of the speed of sound. So um, once we have equal flow on all parts, then we'll hear it's subsonic. Yeah, and I... Oh, and almost, real quick, almost a reverse of... I'm sorry, Jesse, almost a reverse of before. We see the Earth starting to come into view. We've got we've got sunrise there over over the Indian Ocean. So this is this is going to look different from any of the re-entries we've had before. And it was specifically so, like, we, we get as much daylight as possible to see how ship does this. Over to you, Jesse. Sorry about that. Dan, you great minds think alike. That's exactly what I was going to point out, is that we're getting a lot clearer view of the Earth in the background with uh, the different temperatures that we're seeing with the different colors um, of that plasma around the ship, which is really, really cool to see. Again, um, we are pushing the limits of ship today, um, but so far everything is looking pretty nominal. Um, yeah. We'll see how the next few minutes goes. <laughs> yeah, like we've said before, don't be surprised if this is not entirely smooth sailing <laughs> all the way down to the ocean surface. Similar to Flight 5, we are targeting the same splashdown location in the Indian Ocean, but we are not expecting to recover the vehicle. Right, and we were getting some glimpses of the flaps. The flaps so far are looking pretty good. We're not seeing any burn through. There's those flaps again um, in that hinge area, which is our most concerning area there. Um, that's great news for us for now. Again, the next few minutes could change as we continuously push those limits. Yeah, once once we slow down a little bit, once we're subsonic, essentially, so I think that's about 1,200 kilometers. An hour. And yeah, this is very different where we had nighttime mm -hmm. views of the ship as it was re-entering. And now we've got daylight. It is about an hour or so after sunrise there in the Indian Ocean. So pretty cool to see this. Yeah, and it might not seem like it makes a huge difference, but we do get a little bit more light on ship as well for the camera views that we have, um, which is very beneficial for us to visually see anything and try and correlate that to any of the sensors or data that we have on the vehicle. Exactly. That is why we shifted our launch window so that we could have the daylight in order to improve our observations of the vehicle. So not only are we getting all the raw data from all the sensors that are on board Starship, but we also have multiple cameras and assets out there that are watching the vehicle and will also be able to tell us with this visual story that is also very, very important. And as we get down a little bit lower, the Raptor engines are in their chill phase right now. So just essentially getting them primed to turn on. We're, we're gonna use th those three center engines uh, to do a landing flip and then a landing burn. So we'll come down kind of in that slightly pointed down belly flop and then fire off those engines. 
to flip us around and then do that final landing burn. That should be coming up in just a little over, just under five minutes from now. Uh, and then hopefully we start hearing some some call outs on transonic and subsonic as we slow down. Again, once once you hear Starship as subsonic, keep a close eye on the flaps. They they're gonna be they're gonna be working overtime essentially uh, to maintain control of the ship as we as we get a little more aggressive with this. We can see that we are beginning. Starship has passed maximum entry dynamic pressure. All right, great call out there. But we can see on this view here that we do have some heating there on that looks like one of the forward flaps on Starship. This is to be expected. We knew that the vehicle uh, would perform differently than what we had seen on Flight 5. This is actually really good data because it tells us what parts of the vehicle at this, you know, what will soon be a higher angle of attack once we drop down uh, below the speed of sound. We'll have a higher angle of attack, meaning we're going to be flying nose down, basically. Um, so yeah, this is good news, but we can actually, it looks like that heating is starting to cool off there. Yeah, it's a little burn through. Um, again, it is important to note when we start seeing that um, through the ship's descent as well. So like Kate was saying, it, we're getting some really good data here. Um, looks like uh, the other flaps are doing a little better than the one that has a little burn through, which is some good news. Uh, again, constantly watching. We've got a couple minutes until we're expecting uh, to make it all the way back down to Earth. Exactly. And like we said before, uh, we are not expecting to recover the ship, although that would be great. It would be a nice bonus if it happened, but it's not really in our expectations today. Um, we really want to push the hardware, as we've been saying, but really the telemetry and the data and the video that we receive all the way to the end is truly what we're looking for and will help inform the future designs of this vehicle. We can see some flap movement as the camera is moving around. Um, that's what you're seeing there is the flaps adjusting. Um, and we have a camera on one of the flaps there that were, that this is the view that you're seeing there. And you can also see the graphic in the bottom. Starship um, is slowing down past Mark 1. And call outs aligning with this. You can see the orientation of the vehicle starting to change. You can follow that graphic at the bottom of your screen. Um, again, that is why those flaps are changing. They control the orientation of the vehicle. Yeah, there are yeah, four. This is Go ahead, Starship Dan. has started the subsonic ballast oh, drop. Good. Remains on a good trajectory. I was going to say, this is, this is when things will we'll start to get a little interesting. So this is when we're, we're moving slower than the speed of sound. You can see that nose slowly start to tip down uh, and we're gonna try and maintain flap control the whole way. But we are just, just a couple minutes away from hopefully doing a landing flip, uh, landing flip and landing burn if, if uh, the flaps can hold together. Yeah, this is such a cool view. This reminds me uh, of when we first performed the belly flop maneuver on the high altitude test with serial number eight. We saw the ship come back through and I always wondered what it looked like from the ship's perspective. And this perspective I think helps inform that. We will be, as Dan said, we will be dipping down a little further and really be flying nose first. Um, this higher angle of attack, you know, we're intentionally doing it to stress those aft flaps and that will help inform the limits of flap control in order to collect data for future landing profiles. I mean, we're looking, we're looking good so far. We've just got about five kilometers in altitude to go. We'll, we'll ignite the engines when we're still just a couple hundred meters uh, over the ground, do that flip. Starship is passing landing. through five kilometers altitude, remains on a good trajectory. I have a feeling this is going to look so cool as it passes through the clouds. Obligatory shout out to the entire avionics team on Starship. <laughs> and there's that nose down orientation. Now the uh, Raptor engines will relight and help flip the booster back up. This is a more severe flip given the orientation. 
Uh, the engines will shut down prior to the water making impact, prior to the vehicle making impact with the water. Wow, the ship is doing great so far. There's, There's those engines the relighting. What a great reorientation by Starship. Wow. All three down to two into the water. Starship is landed. Wow. And we have ship splashed down in the Indian Ocean. <laughs> Some awesome buoy cam action here. There's, Daylight news. Incredible. We really pushed the limits on shipping and made it all the way back down to Earth. I am shocked, to be <laughs> honest. I think many folks are. Uh, the fact that it survived all the way through. <laughs> wow.